Hey guys, Korth Camel. I'm hoping to wrap up the uh, fork portion of the suspension swap on the T7 tonight. I think that I have all the pieces that I need. Uh, and once that's done, we can move on to the shock, which we'll do next episode. So a couple things since I did the last video. Um, there was too much preload on the fork springs, which is weird because I did the math and um, all the preload should have been on the money. And then I got them and they were like eight mil, um, too much preload. So with the weight of the bike, the fork sagged like like 10 mil, it was crazy. Uh, so uh, I now know what happened um, with them. And uh, to correct it, we turned down spring purchase here. So uh, I, it's an ongoing issue that I have. I don't have uh, the space in the shop for a mill or a lathe. I would totally have a manual mill and a lathe so that I could do all these small parts myself and I just don't have the room, unfortunately. Um, so that's something that I need to uh, need to work on moving forward. Of course, everything's sort of up in the air right now, sort of in limbo. Do I want to sign a big commercial lease right now for a bigger space? I really don't. Um, so I uh, just try to, uh, <laughs> try to leverage friends um, and uh, you know, kind of partners in business uh, so that I can get some of this stuff done. So track down uh, a friend of mine who had a lay that works. So went and turned down these spring perches. And then the other thing is in the bottom of your fork is um, it's an oil lock. So it's about an inch deep and it's got a real slight taper on it here and it's kind of a spring guide and it's a sealing device. So this, <clears throat> this slides into the end of the fork tube. And then when the fork screws into the lug, this seal um, seals the bottom of the sealing device to the bottom of the lug. And then that O-ring seals the fork tube to the sealing device. So we don't have oil um, coming up and around, uh, like seeping between the tube and the fork lug, um, but then there's that oil lock in there as well. So when, I can't remember whether I went over this on a previous video or not. I shoot a lot of stuff and then it doesn't actually end up making it into a video. Um, it just gets edited out and then I think I'll tackle it later. So I think that's what happened, but we've got like a bottom up bullet here and then we've got the oil lock. So when, the cartridge, the cartridge starts to compress. This guy's in the bottom of the tube and the cartridge is coming down and that bullet slides into the female section here and there's a real tight clearance there. There's about 10 thou difference between the two. And then uh, we get like a one inch bump stop at the end. So <clears throat> so we get about a one inch bump stop at the end of the travel. So it's to keep it from being metal on metal. So I keep setting this down. Um, it's to keep it from being metal to metal. So when it, the fork bottoms out, this hits here with a mighty thud um, and you get the big clack and you can lose control of your bike when that happens. You get a big buck out of it. Uh, so especially on an adventure bike, you're coming along, you're pounding stuff. There's so much more weight there um, that the, the, if you set the forks up for a ton of bottoming resistance, um, then, then they're not very plush. So we didn't want to go without the oil lock, uh, but we've limited the up travel by two inches. So we needed to make the oil lock two inches longer. So that's exactly what we did. So that's the factory one there. And then I made a new uh, spring guide slash uh, oil lock. So this is this part with this machined out. And then this tube is actually part of a, um, a cartridge on an open chamber uh, uh, WP fork. Um, and then you can see, maybe you can get it to focus here. So you can see the, the ridge there. So I machined that down and left a, left a ridge on it, squared this up and then pressed this in, knurled the one end first actually, put a red Loctite on it and then pressed it in. So we've got an oil lock um, that is two inches taller plus an extra uh, seven sixteenths. Um, so instead of having like a one inch oil lock, um, now we're uh, one end, um, 
one and seven sixteenths or an extra about 11 mil, which is good on the big bike. So let's see here how everything fits together. I obviously don't have the tube on here and I don't have the spring in here. So as the fork starts to compress, the cartridge comes down, it's the bottom of a bullet, and then we've got the hydro lock there. So it just starts to touch right there. And then that's what we get for, uh, for a bump stop at the end. So that, that controls the big clunk at the end. So thankful to friends who let me borrow their lathe so we could get those spun up. So yeah, so that's about it. Oh, this is funny. Um, so like I said, I ended up with more spring preload than I thought that I should really have. And I, I went through the numbers over and over and tried to figure it out. Um, and these are the rebound adjusters that go on the bottom of the forks. And you'll notice one of these things is not like the other. Um, so the donor set of forks that I got um, off of like local buy and sell, got them super cheap, can't complain, but one of the adjusters was long and one of them short. So somewhere along the line, they lost one, broke one, whatever, and then replaced it um, and didn't realize that it's a different length. So uh, that would account for about an extra three mil of, uh, of preload on my springs which was part of the problem. So that sorted out now, which was good. It took me over forever to figure that out. All right, so we're actually gonna go ahead and get the uh, forks assembled and then I can get them in the bike and then I can start working on the shock and then I can start working on other things. This bike has been on the lift for like a month and a half and it's been driving me crazy. The weather's finally here to ride and the only thing keeping me from riding is there's no suspension in it. Oh, one last thing. Well, not last thing, there'll be a bunch of other things, but uh, there's no way you're gonna see this in the tube. Well, you know, just maybe. Maybe the light is just right. So, uh, these are the, the tubes that were on my Africa Twin. They're, they are Cabot Triple S. Um, and I had them anodized black, because I think they look badass in black instead of the gold. Uh, and I was going to use these again. However, um, at this location, the lower triple clamp location, the uh, anodizing is blown out on both of them. So there's some wear marks in there, um, which is unfortunate. So I don't know, uh, this one has got the anodizing worn out about three quarters of the way around, looks like a C. And then the other one has just got a spot on it. So I am wondering if I, at some point, over tightened the lower triples um, and caused a slight shrink on this and that wore them, that or these guys have a slight bend in them. Um, there is a spot in here that, that has no wear whatsoever. Um, so I don't know, my Africa Twin took a lot of abuse, so I don't know whether I hit something big at one point and tweaked these, not sure. Anyway, um, so we're gonna have to go ahead and use the uh, regular gold kind of colored forks, which I really don't wanna do, but we'll get them anodized black next time I do a batch. Well, holy shit, we've shot like 15 minutes of video and the camera is still recording. Amazing. Uh, you might recall from first, second video, whatever, uh, the, the ID of this is slightly too big for the fork tubes uh, and that was a mistake. Uh, I screwed something up when I was trying to relay information to my, um, my 3D guy. Uh, so these are a little oversized. Their one side is slightly worse than the other side. Um, so I've got, uh, I'm go. <clears throat> so this is three thou um, shim stock. So we're going to roll this up <clears throat> and wrap it around the fork tube and it will sit in here and it should take up the slack, I think one of them is gonna go in fairly well and then the other one is going to be pretty tight. So I might have to put a little bit of heat to these guys to get them to open up. Um, I'm gonna try and do that without. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. We've got a, this O-ring sits in the bottom of that sealing device. So we've actually got to put the fork tube, um, we're gonna to have to spin the, uh, the lug on top down rather than doing stuff this way because I don't, well, maybe. 
I have concerns about that staying where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna put a dab of grease on it uh, and hopefully it will stay. Life will be much easier if I can do them upside down um, or right side up, I should say. Yeah, this should work. This is gonna be good and tacky. Uh, normally I do this stuff with blue Loctite, but on these lugs, it's super critical. If they spun out, you'd have a giant mess. Um, would likely lead to a pretty horrific crash, which I'm not really into. So I crashed enough on my own. I don't need any extra outside forces helping me along. So I think that, hmm, I'm gonna do this. So I'll drop that guy in. So, and then we'll do the red. It's nice, the, this red is kind of a, a little more gel-like. The blue that I currently have is really watery um, and it just drips off, it doesn't hang like that. Doesn't look nearly as cool, the red anodized lug with a gold body. Wah, wah, wah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll get that, I'll get that sorted out uh, the next time I get some black anodizing. Originally I was going to do a video of swapping um, the internals of the cartridge uh, from my good set that's, um, that's already revalved into my donor set, which has better cartridges and rods. Uh, and I did it and I ended up not using the video. Um, I'm not a suspension guy, so uh, I don't want to inadvertently uh, give you guys uh, bad, shit, let me get my foot here. Uh, inadvertently give you guys uh, wrong information. Um, I can get this stuff together, but it's not my, it's not my strong suit. So just decided it was better to uh, leave uh, those tutorial how-to videos to someone who is actually a suspension guy. Um, so just drop the damping rod in here. We've got got this guy spun tight all the way down. And I'm gonna put the rod on the ground. Fuck. So I'm gonna do it that way. Because the springs are so stiff on adventure bikes, pushing this down, I find that if you take the axle and put it in, you can push this down a lot easier. And then you can get this started relatively without too much drama. So that's at minus 10, which is halfway. So 
so I just got the forks in, got everything buttoned up here, um, and something that I noticed, which is a good thing, because it would have made a mess, is the diameter of the bottom of the, the fork here uh, is not, when it comes down, it's going to tag this. So on the stock forks, um, there was 30 mil of shaft left when they were fully bottomed and the forks were uh, smaller diameter. So um, these guys stick out 13 millimeters. So yeah, that would have nailed, uh, would have nailed that, would have made a mess. So uh, good thing I saw it now because the first time I bottomed out, I don't know what would have happened. Made a mess at the bottom of the forks, would have bent the shit out of that. Would have been less than ideal. 15 is going to give us lots of clearance here. So I'm going to take this in just a little bit more. So I'm just going to hit these real quick with some spray paint, um, just so that doesn't rust. I've got a bunch of black powder coating that's got to go in uh, shortly, so I'll just take these in at the same time and get them done. But in the meantime, just a light spritzing will do. 